we've been talking about doing the shovel head build series for quite some time. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we start the series on building the shovel head for the curve bike from case up. Now this isn't the first episode in the series of the bike in total. You'll look back on the playlist there and see that we visited Andy Anderson up in Nashville to start working out the paint details. And then there will be many, many episodes to come on building this shovel head. And we're going to go from the case all the way to the top with head work and everything so you guys can see everything. So it's going to be a multi-part series. So I'm excited to get this one started. Now, before we do get started with that, there's a couple of updates I wanted to give you guys. If you remember a while back, all of you jumped in, subscribers and members, and jumped in to help us raise money. And then I matched some of your donations. And then and then from the t-shirt sale, and such all that money got pulled in together for us to do the second all kids bike program in the state of Georgia and I'm absolutely thrilled to report that the bikes have made it and the kids are already loving it here's a quick video clip of them riding around the gym unfortunately because of scheduling COVID restrictions and things like that we weren't able to be there for the build but they got all the bikes built and the kids are up and loving it and so I'm hoping to get some more photographs and video from the school uh, here over the next coming weeks. And of course, I'll keep you guys updated on that. I just wanted to extend, and again, my sincere gratitude for all of you that chipped in to make this possible. Now, number two, I want to introduce you to David. Now, David is uh, hes a customer of ours. He's been ordering parts from us. We, we haven't worked on his bike, but he has ordered parts from us. And this is his granddaughter, Angelica Dawn. A pretty little thing. So when David ordered parts from us one time, he he had told us that Angelica Dawn is our number one fan. That if she hears my voice pop up on videos or something uh, there at the house, that she'll come running. And and she has watched every single one of my videos and loves watching the videos. And I just think it's wonderful that a pretty young lady like this has a passion for learning and a passion for motorcycles and what we do. And uh, I also learned that she refers to me as Uncle Kevin. Ain't that something? So, of course, what I had to do, I, I grabbed a piston out of an M8 that we had uh, taken out of an engine during one of our teardown videos and wrote her a really nice note on that piston and uh, put some clear coat on it for her, sent her a t-shirt and then put it on top of a, a what I call a stand. It was basically just a compensator out of a bike. And, uh, you know, it it, uh, it absolutely does my heart good to know that a parent can feel comfortable allowing their child to sit and watch our content, uh, that they feel safe doing that. It just absolutely fills my heart with joy. So I wanted to give a big thanks to Angelica Dawn from Uncle Kevin for being my biggest fan. I, I just think it's awesome. And guys, I, I want you to do me a favor. Anyone watching this video, she's going to be watching this. Do me a favor. Let's slam this comment section full with encouraging words for Miss Angelica Dawn uh, that she stays on her path of learning and, and has and develops that passion for, for building and motorcycling as she gets older. So guys, let's give her a bunch of encouraging words here in the comments because I know it would make her feel like a million bucks to read them all. So thanks for doing that and helping out. So uh, let's get started building this shovel head. This, of course, you know, it's a personal project, so it's been done over the course of many months. I'm not completely done with it yet. So the footage is going to be bouncing around from various different times and such because I'm doing it on in evenings and early mornings and days off and such. So, um, but anyway, so we're going to piece it together in the process and we're going to get this thing going. So guys, let's start. Let's build the shovel head for the curve bike now. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
first let's get you up to speed with where we're at uh, we're not starting with stock HD cases we're actually starting with this magnificent set of STD cases the, the cases themselves they're in absolutely wonderful condition so uh, I'm very happy to start with these now I want to uh, also get you up to speed with some of the stuff I've done off camera uh, so the first off uh, you've got this bearing race that's in here uh, that bearing race has already been installed and has already been line honed uh, with the Timken bearing and you can see I've already put the Timken bearing races in there as well uh, that's already been done now these cases were bead blasted <laughs> and uh, think about it for, for all you guys that want to powder coat engine parts and, and also bead blast engine parts uh, which you have to blast them in order to powder coat things uh, it's powder coating can be very or excuse me bead blasting can be really really nasty I, I don't know the history of these cases, but I can look inside here and see that they have been blasted uh, before, especially on the outside. I, I was just having a conversation with Barry Wardlaw from Accurate Engineering the other day uh, on this particular subject. And uh, you can put them in a hot sink all you want with Dawn. You can use solvents. Uh, you can, you know, whatever you want to do to clean them. But when you when you blast that media will get it actually impregnate into the aluminum and what will happen is as those cases or cylinders or heads heat up then that media will release from the pores and can absolutely destroy an engine so being I don't know the history of this we're gonna take a lot of extra precautions to make sure that that's not gonna come back to haunt us uh, the other thing is you know on, on evo shovels all these the uh, cone styles you've got some very small oil passages that are in here and so uh, we we need to make sure that all those passages are cleaned out and we've got a big pack of pipe cleaners here to do that but what i want to show you th these cases have been solvent cleaned they have also been run uh it, i mean it multiple times in a sink with hot water and dawn and uh, so it, it scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and yet on the inside of the case you can still if you rub your hand in there hard enough you can see a little bit of gray that's on my hand there uh, so again yeah see all that uh, so we've got to take some extra precautions so what uh, I'm gonna do is spend some more time in the sink to get this film off of it as much as I can then I'm also going to heat them and then bathe them again put them in the sink and, and, and basically a sink of boiling water to try to release even more of that glass bead uh, and then we're gonna let them dry completely now another thing about aluminum is it will absorb absorb moisture almost instantly alright so once we get this clean then we're gonna blow it off and do all of that but then I'm going to put these either on a hot plate or I'm going to grab a propane torch and I'm going to torch the inside of this and I'll show you on video you're going to see the moisture you'll see it fog up uh, it's not the humidity in the air it's the moisture coming out of the aluminum so I want to make sure that I get all of that moisture out of the inside of the cases and once we do that we're going to coat them with Glyptol so Glyptol is a uh, it's an, an enamel uh, that's uh, chemical resistant uh, and the idea being to completely seal up any possible particulate that's left in there uh, and then also you know it was a it was a problem on the stock stuff the old stuff uh, with your transmission cases and things the porosity issues uh, where oil would leach through it and of course these STD cases are going to be much much better and more dense than what a stock case would be but you know it's uh, pr again precautionary measures so uh, let's go to the sink and let's start scrubbing all right they cleaned up exceptionally nice uh, spent quite a bit of time scrubbing scrubbing so they cleaned up really well and uh, all the all the aluminum components the heads the, uh, the, the the cases everything else are are all blast finished natural aluminum I didn't want to paint anything because I, I really I, I like the look of the natural finish aluminum so I, I give you a little tip first off when you when you if, if you're building an engine like this 
I highly recommend when you clean everything, set it off to the side and let it sit for two or three weeks. Aluminum will form an oxide layer. All right, and that oxide layer is kind of like when you blew a, a blue metal, right? Blew a rifle, gun, whatever. And that oxide layer will, will put a little protection barrier on the engine, but you can still stain it, all right? So what we want to do, we want to make sure our hands stay very clean and we're working with, you know, microfibers. Keep your hands very clean so, uh, you know, you don't leave fingerprints and stuff on that natural aluminum. And uh, if you happen to get something on there, just take a little bit of brake cleaner and, and wipe it off as quick as you can so it doesn't stain it. And then, of course, after we finish building this engine, it's going to sit for a little while, again, forming that, a bit of an oxide layer. You want to catch it before it starts turning white. As long as you're in normal conditions, it really shouldn't do that. Uh, you know, outside salt air, that sort of thing. So it, it shouldn't do that. Uh, and then you can spray it down. I'm, I'm actually going to use uh, uh, the uh, uh, Clockwork Shine Works and coat it down two or three times, let it absorb into it, and that'll be a good protection layer. There's some other good products out there, uh, metal protectors and things like that, but, uh, but I know the Clockwork stuff won't turn this yellow, so that's what I'm going to go that route. Now, I've taken the pipe cleaners and I have went through every single oil passage. I have went through every single bolt hole and I've actually, off camera, I've had to make a ton of repairs to this case as well. So like, for example, just on the primary side here, every single, uh, every single hole for the primary was uh, stripped. So I had to time cert all of those and then filed them down. Uh, so I had to repair all of those as well. Fortunately, none of the quarter 20s were damaged but despite uh, you know all the care that's t that's taken to prepare this I and and I even thread chase these I've cleaned them out again scrub brush air blowing each hole out and when you there's a little there okay we're gonna go do this again round round two on uh, pipe cleaners brushes thread chasing and some time in the sink we just don't want to damage we don't want to damage these threads, so we'll be back here in a second. Yeah, you can see all the, uh, this isn't metal, this is sand, guys. See all that right there? So, just again, despite all the care taken, uh, it can still happen. So we're going to make sure our tap's good and clean, move to the next one. See all that sand there? Okay, because of what I found here and that much coming out, we're gonna go wash it again. We're gonna put solvent in each one of these holes, break clean, we're gonna blow them out again, go through the whole process. Let's get that done. Okay, now we wanna move kinda quick with this next step in the process because aluminum and a welder will tell you. Uh, I actually had a very, very good friend of mine, Paco, who is a uh, certified, he's a master at welding. It's been his lifelong trade. Uh, he'd actually shown me quite a while back uh, on welding aluminum at, at just a quick demonstration of how much uh, moisture aluminum can collect just from the air almost immediately. So Glyptol, where it, where it actually came from, is uh, they use it on electric motors. Uh, their insulation there. So uh, we're, we're basically going to hit the casting surfaces here. We want to stay off from this area right here. We also want to stay off of the area uh, kind of st stay off this area right here. So we're basically just working, you know, around in here where the oil might sit in the bottom of the sump, and then we'll do the same thing on both sides. Okay, now I want to show all of you the moisture. So if you can see that on my finger, you know, like condensation there. Reach up in here. See the moisture. Actually, here's a good see that water spot right there. Yeah.
all right what I'm doing here is just checking the temperature of the uh, yeah it's it's nice and hot I believe if our memory serves me correctly I believe it's 125 Celsius um, yeah that's correct 125 Celsius so if we double that 250 add 30 that's 280 degrees uh, we're we're close enough 250 actually or 260 in some spots yeah so we're good uh, let me grab some gloves and we'll pull these off the hot plate now I will tell you it's uh, you want to you still want to let this cool down and let the rest of the, the uh, solvents evaporate from it because it's still going to be soft to the touch uh, until it cools and then again fully cures so and uh, we're going to check the temperature on our bearing surfaces and on the case here and we're right at uh, 60 69 degrees all right now as I said this is not a hot rod build so what we're starting with here is uh, basically uh, we're starting with a, a, a stock Evo set of wheels and then the rods themselves are are uh, actually uh, reproduction rods uh, from Ted's cycle and uh, you'll notice these bearings are already in place. It was done to check the clearances uh, after honing the bearing race there. And we've got those sized up perfectly. Alright, so you have these spacers that go between the bearings. Alright, let's see what we're going to start with here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, 100 and, we're at 104 thousandths. So let's start there and see what we have. And you want to do this dry as well and we're going to set this up we're going to set this up at three thousandths all right it's going to be my target yes yeah, so I'm, I'm right at three uh i think we got lucky on that uh let's leave it uh leave it exactly where it is excellent now one thing that we want to be sure we do uh, I mean it's a shovel head you got to run acorn nuts so one thing I want to make sure is I'm getting proper torque on all of these of course you notice I didn't put any assembly loop here I haven't put any sealant on or anything uh, but what I want to do is put all the bolts in and I'm going to measure the depth of each of these acorn nuts compared to the studs I want to make sure I'm getting the correct clamping force and I'm not just bottoming out the acorns. 